Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the most adventurous Omega launch of the 2018 model year. This is the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8 50th Anniversary Edition, a special tribute to the December 1968 Apollo 8 three-man mission that left Earth, orbited the Moon, and returned safely. Witnessing the first ever Earth rise rather than sunrise, the astronauts of Apollo 8 are celebrated in what is effectively Omega demonstrating its core difference from Rolex. That is, Omega is willing to have a little bit of ironic fun and even allow you to laugh at it rather than with it. So adventurous, so outlandish, so unusual that you can literally not imagine Rolex doing something like this in a million years. And that, rather than style or tech, is where Omega differs from Rolex in sensibility. And this watch is redolent of Omega's sensibility. With the original Moonwatch based caliber inside and the dark side of the moon case size and materials applied to a singular example of Omega perhaps channeling Roma Jerome. 44.25 millimeters on my wrist. You can see my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears it easily. The dial is open and you can see a little bit of the caliber 1868 inside the watch. So the dial is partly evacuated to show the movement. The remainder is laser ablated to show a surface much like that of the moon itself, but more on that in a moment. The watch is thick, but maybe not as thick as you imagined. 14 millimeters thick. It's slimmer than the standard dark side series because it has a manual movement inside. Now lug to lug, it's exactly what you expect of the dark side series. 49.7 millimeters with a 21 millimeter lug spacing. The timepiece does feature a wonderfully imaginative bolstered leather strap that features a yellow contrasting stitch, perforations, a little bit of a yellow inner layer. As you can see, there is yellow leather inside, but it's neither atop nor on the bottom. You can see it at an angle through the perforations. Clever and nuanced. The buckle is ceramic, so if you do drag this along your desk and you're a desk diver rather than an armchair aviator. Nevertheless, you can still wear this moon watch without scratching or marring the buckle. Everything is ceramic and effectively is scratch resistant to sapphire. The case band, which features the classical Speedmaster beveled lugs and satin sheer side. You can also see the tachymeter flaring out in its typical cantilevered fashion. Note the difference between satin and polish. Omega uses diamond tipped tools to create the same finish on ceramic that it would achieve on metal and that is quite impressive. You'll also appreciate the fact that the tack is highly stylized with a little bit of Luminova laid in, as well as a flash of yellow, and yellow is the complementary color of the entire watch, blazing inside and out. So you can actually see this tack at night, and if you want to time something going very fast between two fixed points, like the start and finish of a standing kilometer, you can use the tack and the chronograph. Now getting super close and affording ourselves a little bit more light, you can see that the dial is highly detailed. The registers are raised, chronograph hours and minutes are favored over constant seconds, which is minimized. There is a Speedmaster racing style staggered checker hash mark array outboard of cantilevered and fully loomed hour indices and you can see that the dial base itself features that laser ablated moon surface so you're looking at the lunar surface on your wrist the dark side of the moon of course and yellow lacquer or as Omega calls it, yellow varnish present and correct now turning the watch on its flank you can see even the crown itself features luminova and on the case back you can see Pardon me, it's Omega 1869, not Omega 1868, though make no mistake, Apollo 8 was 1968. Now the movement, 19 joules and nicely executed, although it's said to be based on the 1861. In reality, it's based on the display case back caliber 1863, which means all of the parts are finished to a very high standard. And when I look at some of the levers of the chronograph mechanism itself, I can't say for sure that these aren't hand finished or at least partly hand finished components. That's how nice the beveling is on the flanks and how rounded and mirrored. A three hertz beat rate or 21,600 vibrations per hour it does feature a lateral clutch and a cam or shuttle system. It's the same nearly indestructible basic engineering that goes into the movement, still certified for space use by NASA. 48 hour power reserve, manually wound and nicely executed. You can see the bridges also feature that laser ablated pattern so you get the benefit of that lunar surface 
on both sides, as well as the message from the three-man crew of Apollo 8, circa December 1968, see you on the other side, and indeed they did, making it back to Earth to tell the tale. Now, the watch is sensational, and in many respects, it's an interesting hybrid of the dark side and the traditional moon watch, but the best news about this watch is that it is simply redolent with Omega character. If you want to know, in a nutshell, what really makes Omega different than Rolex, it's this watch and the sense of joie de vivre inherent in everything that's different and daring about its dial and composition. See it and make it yours on the watch box. Omega Speedmaster Apollo 8, fully loomed crown, fully loomed tack, and dial.